we've talked about all kinds of different treatment options. We've talked about uh, somatostain analogs. We've talked about mTOR inhibitors. We've talked about angiogenesis inhibitors. We've talked about chemotherapy. Uh, there is yet another treatment approach uh, that has been used primarily in Europe, uh, peptide receptor radiotherapy. Uh, Eric, I think you probably referred a few of your own patients over for that, and there's recent new data about PRT uh, that looks pretty exciting. Absolutely. The PRT is a really kind of a different technology and approach to what we're doing. Um, talk about having uh, milking somatostatin for every little bit we can. We have. I mean, we treat it for symptoms uh, as a cold hormone. We use it for imaging. And now we can put a radioactive payload behind it and give internal radiation therapy. So PRRT, which is, as you said, peptide receptor radionuclide therapy, is essentially fixing the octreotide analog, somatostatin analog, with a chelator, and you can carry a radioactive isotope either the isotope 177 lutetium or 90 yttrium. And uh, in general, the, we're starting to use it, um, the lutetium 177 because it's a more gentle, more durable, probably uh, second generation isotope. And what it does is it, it's an IV injection. So it, there's a little bit of a, a catch to it is because there's a companion diagnostic to it, which is either the Octrea scan or the gallium scan. And what that does is it tells me, is the somatostatin receptor in place? So is there a target for me to, to send the hormone to? If there is a good signal, then what you can do is you can, it's an IV therapy, and it's systemic as well too, so it's, you know, it's kind of in complement with your systemic therapies. And it essentially binds to the tumor, it absorbs the radiation within the tumor itself, and then it, it continually radiates the tumors from the inside out. And the general regimen is you take a dose of the, of the PRRT, you wait two months for your bone marrow recovery, you take another one, you take another one, you take another one, you take about four therapies. And what we found is um, that, especially in, in Europe, to be quite effective in tumor control, progression-free survival, symptom control, many really kind of wonderful outcomes. Unfortunately, in Europe, it was kind of a cottage industry, right? So you had small, you know, as Dr. Yao mentioned, kind of small retrospective studies for which we didn't, we didn't really collect and look maybe carefully enough. But uh, very exciting, uh, Advanced Accelerator Applications is now um, kind of bringing this forward. And they just completed the Netter-1 trial, which is a large uh, PRT trial, a randomized trial, uh, international, multicenter, looking at uh, the effects in mid -gut, metastatic midgut carcinoids and progressive disease. And they found a significant separation in progression-free survival between the patients who were on either high-dose sanostatin, so a, a, a pseudotherapy of some sort, uh, versus their PRT. And it's actually really interesting because they've been following it out now and they're even seeing some separation in overall survival. So we're very hopeful that we'll be able to bring this therapy to the United States and it'll be just yet another tool as the surgery, as, as hormone, as chemotherapies are in order to treat these patients. It does open up a lot of questions though because the question now is, well, when do I use it? Can I use it before surgery, after surgery, before chemo, after chemo? So the whole, getting back to the whole sequencing, don't get me wrong, I would much rather have more tools in the toolbox than less. But uh, it's, it's something that's new and something that's exciting. And again, you really need a whole multidisciplinary team to evaluate when to treat these patients and with what. So Eric, I want to toss a question back to you. You mentioned uh, the gallium-68 as a companion diagnostic. Uh, to my knowledge, um, the gallium-68 PET um, you know, tied to Dototaco, Dototate, has not been really demonstrated to be a companion diagnostic for PRT. Netter one was then done essentially based, uh, based on octreal scan. In fact, the craning scale is based on the least sensitive part of the octreal scan, which is the planar image. So the idea is you don't want treating patient who's barely positive, you want you know, using a very sensitive test. You want to treat patients who are super, super positive that you can pick up even in a very insensitive test. Uh, how, how are we going in the future you know, translate what craning scale means in the, in the age of, uh, you know, Dota, uh, you, know, you know, tied to like uh, gallium 68 and PET. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a, that's a really good question, James. And I think part of that comes from the fact that we haven't had gallium technology here. So just to expound a little, step back a little bit. So the gallium scan, as we said, is basically a, a gallium, 68 iso gallium 68 isotope hooked to the octreotide molecule. And instead of therapy or cold therapy, it's just a, you take pictures of it, right? So it's an imaging technology. What's different from Octrea scan, though, is that it's PET, PET technology. So you can actually do a lot more things with it. 
One, it's more sensitive. One, it's actually, you know, you get better resolution. It, it's just a better picture. So sure, maybe you're just getting better pictures. But actually, the one thing that's actually most valuable with it is it actually is shown, you can actually quantitate the amount of radiation that's taken up by your tumors. So um, I think as we get more experience with, um, with the uh, gallium scan, we can actually get a better quantitation. You're exactly right. Does the Krenning scale, which is essentially just how dark uh, an image looks on Octrea scan on a planar image, does that correlate better with the uh, um, standardized uptake values from a PET scan? And maybe we can actually correlate that. If you have an SUV of 40, let's say, say that maybe those are going to be the best ones for PRRT. And maybe if it's six, maybe those are not the best one. But at least having some quantitation, I think. Uh, and that's an emerging technology, too, as well. Hopefully, we'll have that approved in the US as well. So as we start to develop more experience, I think they'll start to come together.